If you remember kicking down ladders, eating random fruit on the floor, and evil Santa Saruman, then you grew up playing Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. But which one? Because there were five completely different versions of this game and in this video we're going to compare each of them. And so we come to the second chapter in our series. The Fellowship games were a bit of a mixed bag. We had the Vivendi book tie-in game with all of its little quirks. And they make us do so brown that the man in the moon himself flew down. The god awful Game Boy game, and a whole heap of wacky retro games. Old Lady Frodo anyone? So is it going to be more of the same with the two towers? Well let's find out. As always we start with the flagship version for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube and PC. Now this game is incredibly faithful to the movies, and we have copyright and licensing to thank for that. I went into detail about this whole issue in the fellowship video, but long story short, this two towers game is based exclusively on the movies, unlike the Vivendi Fellowship game, released only a few weeks earlier, which was based exclusively on the book. This means that everything you see in the Two Towers game had to have been shown in the films, including the enemies, the locations, etc. That means there's no singing Tom Bombadil in this one. Get out, old white, vanish in the sunlight. Thank God. In terms of gameplay, the Two Towers is made up of levels, which you can play through as either Aragorn, Legolas, or Gimli. You earn skill points, which can then be used to purchase upgrades like combos and power-ups. It's a pretty standard hack and slash game, but all the elements are executed really well. The game also does this thing where it transitions from movie footage to in-game cutscenes. And look, it does a pretty good job with the characters. Well, mostly poor Gimli's model definitely should have had a bit more work. Now, you may have noticed that I keep using the plural term films and movies. That's because the first five levels of the two towers is actually from the Fellowship of the Ring. You see, EA never released a time game for the first movie, so they decided to cram a few levels into this game. I've already covered these levels in my fellowship video, so I'll start from the first two towers level, which is Fangorn Forest. This is a pretty standard hack and slash level, which ends with this river. Hold on, I think I've played this one before. <laughs> Look, there's even a hidden cave behind the waterfall, only instead of a scantily clad spy lady, I get uh, another troll. We then move on to the Plains of Rohan, where you have to kill all the enemies before they deplete the health of the um, women and children. It kind of looks like the women and children are the actual boss. What's cool is you get Gandalf as an assist character for about 10 seconds. You must press on. I am needed elsewhere. No, don't go. Ah, oh, damn it, he's used instant transmission. You see, the problem with these Rohan folk is that they never actually learned to turn left. Get us out! Hurry! I'm trying, but this burnt piece of wood is just too strong for the sword of Gondor. Now, if you screw up, the game will just force you to watch this unskippable cutscene of the Urukai killing all the villagers. And boy, have I seen this cutscene a bunch of times growing up. Now, there is something really satisfying about mowing down these orcs and then finishing them off with the R2 button. Oh, look, Gandalf's back. Hey, you wanna give me a hand and break this cart? No? Congratulations, Aragorn, you saved the men and the women of Rohan. Mm, they all kind of look the same, these women of Rohan. Next, we move on to this cool little level where you and a generic Rohan soldier sabotage the Urukai's explosive stash. And this one is really fun to play as Legolas. And speaking of which, the developers did a good job making the three playable characters just different enough. Aragorn is the balanced character, he can do a bit of everything. Legolas moves, fights, and shoots faster. He also carries more arrows. Gimli is slower but hits harder. Okay, next up we have the boss level, where you fight this evil orc with his big dog. And uh, the pooch tends to go straight for Aragorn's uh, gentleman's area. I must say, having like half an hour of movie footage in this game was pretty amazing. Remember, this was back in the day where you'd have to wait like six months for the movie to come out on VHS. The game concludes with a trilogy of Helm's Deep levels. The first level has you running back and forth along the wall, pushing these ladders down before too many orcs climb up. And if you fail, once again, the game makes sure to show you all the heroes dying a slow and painful death. And you can't skip this cutscene either. Next, you have to protect this wooden door from waves and waves of enemies. First you get the guys with the explosives, then you get the shield, then the troll, then the giant catapult. This is another one of those levels that's etched in my childhood memories. Hey, you guys want to stop stabbing my door? Alright. Welcome, punch! For the final level, you have to defend the gate to the inner courtyard. You're going to be splitting your time between the lower level and climbing up on the wall because Legolas needs your help. 
Seriously, you're telling me you can take down an entire elephant filled with bad guys, but you need help with these, what, three Urukai? Now, this was another level I was too stupid to beat as a child, until a friend at school actually told me that you have to take out the archers on the other side of the wall. Back down at the door, you find this group of orcs just having a mosh pit to the side. Look, they're not actually fighting anyone. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Gandalf turns up and saves the day, and you get a tease for the next game. The Two Towers is a short game, but it's filled with extras. For example, you can actually unlock Saruman's tower and fight up 20 levels. Eventually, you chase the white wizard all the way to the top, and he's pissed. Why must you insist on breaking into my house? As a reward, you unlock Isiliador, who you can use to play through the campaign levels. Damn, he's got some nice parachute pants. In addition to that, you get a bunch of other extras, like interviews with Peter Jackson and the actors, making of the game, making of the movie, still images, concept art, and a bunch of other stuff. Plus, they actually use the movie actors' voices for a lot of the in-game characters. Most people will probably remember Return of the King as the standout game from the movie trilogy, but the two towers really set the groundwork for that game. For example, this game will give you a companion for most of the levels. You can tell the developers probably intended this to be a two-player game, but they just ran out of time. And so this feature would of course be added to the Return of the King game and become one of the best things about that game. Okay, moving on, EA also released a version of Two Towers for the Game Boy Advance. And straight away, things start pretty promising. This version was developed by Gryptonite Games, who did the first three Harry Potter Game Boy RPGs. There are a bunch of characters to pick from, each one with a different campaign. Well, kind of, we'll get to that later. We've got Aragorn, Legolas, Frodo, Gandalf, and Eowyn. Unfortunately, no love for poor Gimli. Look, they even took him off the cover of this game. Now, this version does also start at the Fellowship of the Ring, and I was tempted to cover those levels in my Fellowship video, but it was already kind of getting long, so I saved it for this one. So, let's start with Aragorn. His first level takes place just outside the Mines of Moria. This game is an isometric hack and slash adventure, you go through levels taking down enemies and collecting their droppings, well, you know what I mean. And uh, they'll drop anything from gems to weapons to armor. Oh nice, fruit in a barrel, my favorite. Oh nice, a cauldron filled with Kool-Aid. Oh yeah! Over time, you'll get progressively better weapons and armor. Hmm, looks like this orc was wearing a pretty trendy leather jacket. The game also has an attribute system, similar to Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fury, where you get to choose which skill points to assign to your character. Oh, what's going on there? There must be another path. <laughs> Look, he takes a few boulders to the face and suddenly we've got to turn back. Um, did someone drop a giant head? And so the Fellowship make it into the Mines of Moria. This place is a tomb, Aragorn should go ahead. F you, old man. Why don't you go ahead with your big stick and fancy spells? Every now and then you'll come across a splattered dwarf. Wow, that's pretty brutal for a kid's game. Oh yeah, yeah, just keep walking, you lot. Definitely don't help me fight all of these orcs. Okay, so you make your way through the Mines of Moria doing little puzzles here and there, then Gandalf takes one for the team, and the Fellowship make it out the other side. Now, some of these levels do get a bit confusing and a bit annoying. Oh, come on, I can get through these trees. So Aragorn makes it through the forest, he meets Gandalf, then goes to Rohan and clears the path to Helm's Deep. The last couple of levels are actually similar to the console version. You've got to kick down these ladders, then defend the breach. You then have to go through this stupid underground maze looking for Eowyn, before one final battle against Saruman's army. And uh, that's it for Aragorn. Now, as for Legolas, his campaign is identical. Gandalf's campaign is the same up until the end of the Mines of Moria, where he, you know, falls into the abyss, only to land on his feet. What a legend. You then have to track the Balrog by his footprints. Hmm, still fresh. And uh, then you finally track him down to his, uh, bedroom? I mean, he's got a, a pretty decent view of the mountains. And so you beat the Balrog and suddenly, bam, Gandalf the White. And uh, the rest of his quest is very similar to Aragorn's. We then get Frodo, three quarters of his story is the same. Um, Excuse me, Aragorn, do you mind helping me with this guy? And then the last couple of levels have Frodo going through the marshes. Um, Sam, this uh, puddle's on fire. And then he also goes through Mordor. Also, Frodo's got the ring, which makes him invisible for a bit, but be careful, using it too much gets the ring raves to come after you. Oh no, just f*** off you lot. Great, now I've got the orcs, the crows, and the damn Dementors after me. And then we finally get to Eowyn, who has a much shorter campaign, and most of it just consists of running around Rohan, fighting orcs, and saving villagers. And that's the Two Towers game for the Game Boy Advance in a nutshell. It's one of those games I 
I remember grinding away at in the back seat of my parents' car as we'd go on road trips. And just like its big brother, this game also laid down the foundation for the Return of the King game. Okay, so a quick shout out to the mobile Java game that was released around the same time as the movie. This is a very basic strategy game. You control the Fellowship and take turns attacking orcs, who drop potatoes when you kill them. I mean, come on, what do you expect? It's a 20-year-old mobile game. And finally, we have the retro games, which I think deserve a mention. First up, we have Lord of the Rings Shadow of Mordor. Wait. That's not right. Oh, it's Shadows of Mordor, a software adventure. This is a sequel to The Fellowship of the Ring, a software adventure which we covered in the last video. Now let's see if I get on better with this one. Who do you want to play as? Uh, Sam, I guess. Smeagol enters, Smeagol sneaks off into the bushes. What is this, a tongue twister? Anyway, throw Smeagol off a cliff. He doesn't know how to do that. Well, there's your problem. Moving on, there was also a sequel to the other MS-DOS game. You know, the one with trippy artwork, which has been carried over to this one. The Beatles are on their way to destroy the One Ring, but Evil Santa has something to say about it. There's not much I can say about this game. It's one of those old MS-DOS RPGs you walk around a lot and get into turn-based fights. It seems to be pretty faithful to the book, but it didn't sell enough to warrant a sequel. And so there we have it every version of the Two Towers game. I must say, things are a bit more streamlined this time around, mainly due to the poor sales of the first installments. There are less retro games and no Vivendi sequel, which pretty much just left the Electronic Arts games. And they're both pretty good in their own right. As I said, they lay the foundation for one of the greatest tie-in games ever made, but we'll get to that one next time. Meanwhile, please let me know your memories of the Two Towers games in the comments. And most importantly, who is your favourite main? Diehard Gimli fans, this is your chance to be heard. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.